guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm finally here with another very requested video that is how I wrote my chemistry paper. So here I have with me one of my internal assessment paper, I think the second term paper. I scored 68 out of 70 in this one. So I'll be going through this paper and then we'll discuss about how we can write different answers, the length of each answer, how to prepare for different parts of chemistry that's organic, inorganic and physical. So let's get in the video. So let's start with the basics. Let's talk about one markers. So in one markers, all you're supposed to write is to the point. So here there is a question asking why FeCl3 will have the highest boiling point and the reason is simple that is because it has the highest value of Vantoff factor. So I just wrote that and I underlined that particular point. And just because I had extra time, I also derived why it has the highest Vantoff factor. So you can see the basic length of these one markers. They're just one liners with the important points underlined. So you need to be precise. You will mostly be asked definitions, reasoning based questions or questions based on simple formulas. Now let's focus on this question in two markers. Well, they only asked about what Henry law was. I could have just left this question by defining Henry's law. But since it's a two marker question, I had to write an extra point or else I would have gotten only one mark or probably even half. So I also ended up writing the applications of Henry's law or basically the factors that affect it. And you can also see the basic length of a two marker question. Now look at the length of this three marker. You also realize that in most three and five marker questions, they usually divide it into several parts. So this three marker questions had three parts. So each part carries one one mark. So it's similar to one markers. You just have to be precise and to the point. But there are a few three marker questions which might not exactly be divided into parts. And then you have to go and search up for extra points. For example, in this one question, they only asked about the pseudo first order reaction. And instead of just writing the definition, I also explained to them why it is known as a pseudo first order reaction. This gave me the initial two marks of this three marker question. Now, finally, this is the length of an average five marker question. It almost fills two pages. So these five marker questions are again divided into different parts. So you can just write accordingly. And apart from this, I would also like to mention the use of flowcharts graphs and diagrams whenever possible. If you see in this question, they didn't really ask for a graph, but I still drew it because that shows the teacher that you know what you're writing. And it applies the same for flowcharts and diagrams because it shows how much you've grasped that concept. So it doesn't have to be a professional diagram. You just have to give a general idea about what is going on. Secondly, let's talk about differentiate questions. So in differentiate questions, usually what I do is suppose the question is for three marks, then I will write three points on each side along with one example. If I can't find more than one point, I just try to count the example as one point. So in this question, it's a two marker question. I've written two points and one example and I've gotten all two marks. And if you can't find any differences, you can write the most vague thing ever and still get away with it because you need to fill the paper and get those marks. Let us now talk about reaction mechanism. Unfortunately, I do not have any in this particular paper, but let me give you a general idea about reaction mechanisms. So, well, uh, there are many reaction mechanisms in your 12th board papers like SN1 reaction, SN2 reaction. All you have to remember is you need to know the concept really well. So what you do is before the exam, sit by yourself or take another person and explain the entire reaction mechanism, not in a very professional way, but just as you understand. And once you get a good grasp on that topic, you can further classify it into different parts so that you can go get those marks. So I'm going to be talking about the presentation aspect of reaction mechanisms. You need to make sure that you mention the reactant, the product, there can be a major product or minor product, the reagent used, the reasons if there are any exceptions in the reaction mechanism, and very, very important thing is the basic concept. For example, in a lot of reaction mechanisms, a particular event happens because of resonance or because of hyperconjugation. And that is when you have to mention these 11th grade concepts that you had learned in these answers. So numericals are basically mostly from physical chemistry. So what I did for numericals, if they were for three marks, but the formula was pretty simple, is that I used to write the equations i used to write the formulas and underline them put them in boxes or whatever so that the teacher knows what i'm doing and finally i used to make it look big enough so that it looks like a three marker 
or just basically expand the calculations and I used to underline the final result. So when it comes to numericals, just try to practice the ones that are given in MCRT because they're pretty good and mostly you get those kind of numericals itself. Sometimes you get exceptions and those are completely dependent on your application skills and your application skills depend on how well you understood that topic or that formula. So make sure you know why you're using that particular formula so that if you get a question which is not from NCRT, you're able to solve it. Now finally is derivations. I know there aren't many derivations in chemistry, but if you see in this question, they asked me one simple thing. What is a first order reaction? And it was for four marks. So now I can't just mention what a first order reaction is for four marks. So instead I decided to derive it and draw a graph regarding it. Now this derivation is present in NCRT for us to understand the concept, but sometimes you might have to write it in the paper. You don't really have to learn each and every derivation present in NCRT. All you have to do is that you need to know how it occurs. So if you get a kind of question in your paper, you know where to begin with and you can figure out your way from there. So whenever you see a derivation in NCRT in chemistry, make sure you go through it and make sure you know how to get to that particular formula because at times uh, you can face situations like this and this small percentage of change can affect your marks a lot. And finally, I'm going to talk about inorganic and organic chemistry. Okay, fine. Inorganic chemistry. I know we all hate p block, Dude, don't get me started with p block. That thing, trauma. Anyways, so what I suggest is for... Oh, it started raining. <laughs> um, I suggest for P-Block is that go for the reasoning based questions. So if you see most of the five markers that come from P-Block, D-Block and other inorganic subjects are mostly reasoning based questions which are completely from NCRT or within the depths of NCRT. So go through some questions, online sample papers and figure out all those reasoning based questions. Try to figure out why that is happening and the reason for it. Once you understand the reason, it's easier for you to write it down. So remember the reasoning based questions. There will be situations when they'll ask you formula based questions too, but I'm pretty sure your teachers will let you know which ones are the important formulas. And if you're getting too late, then you don't have to read the entire chapter. Just read the important formulas for inorganic. I genuinely suggest you to read the entire chapter so that you understand everything. I know it's a huge pain to remember everything, but try to do selective reading when it comes to the end of your preparation. I should have prepared well for the lighting. It started raining, God, <laughs> but it's okay. I love rain. Anyways, coming to organic. Well, organic, do it is really interesting, like really, really, really interesting. But when it comes to the paper, all you have to do to get decent enough marks for organic is knowing what each reagent does and knowing what the different kinds of name reactions are. So once you know the name reactions by heart, or if you understand the name reactions, you are guaranteed more than half of the marks for organic. But if you genuinely want to learn organic, want to score really, really well, almost full in organic, then I'd suggest read through the entire topic and try to understand what's going on. Because once you understand organic, it gets so much more simpler. So if you need any help, you can definitely look up to organic chemistry tutor. I can't tell you how much that helped me. So I'm going to link it in my description the best. I'm pretty sure most of you already referred to him, but yes, go for YouTube resources if you can't really understand anything and if your professors are unavailable, but try to understand the concepts more than mugging it up. So that was my basic analysis of my chemistry paper. Apart from that, I would just give you general suggestions, underline important points just like I did, try to make it neat, try leaving lines. Please work on your handwriting. It really, really helps. That's about it. And just by keeping these points in mind, just by presenting your paper really well, you can score really, really well in chemistry. So this was it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I really hope you give me more suggestions for my future videos. So yes, thank you for watching. I'll be coming up with more soon.